I do care. You wrote for the audience of one, yes, Cynthia. Yes, all of those things. There's an audience of one. There's also a publisher that's like, <laughs> let's sell some books, people. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host, Heather McFadden, and this is still the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode, number 465, we're doing what we do on the first Friday of the month, and that's getting sidetracked with my friend, Cynthia Yanoff, the host of the Mesmerize podcast. And boy, oh boy, do we get sidetracked with all the mayhem. Did you get it? May? All the things, y'all. Mother's Day coming up, end of school, award ceremonies, and all the emotions involved there. And we even spend some time getting sidetracked with LTK, dog bites, and bad book reviews, as you heard in the little clip at the beginning. Don't miss, at the end of the episode, we have really fun news to share with y'all about what we're going to start doing this summer. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Are you wearing a kimono? I think so. I think that's officially – this is fast fashion at its finest. I uh, It was one of those influencers, and she was in her bra and panties on my Instagram, and it was cute. And so I clicked on over, and it's from Walmart, and I got the top, and I got the kimono, and I got some sandals. And wouldn't you know they were at my door by like 5 p.m.? Really? It's really cute. Is it reversible? I'm trying to understand no, here. It's not reversible, but my, my boys had comments. Do your, I mean, I know probably Kate doesn't, but I feel like my boys always have comments. One time I wore a vest and my son said, going on a boat? He was mm-hmm. two or three, so that made more sense. But yes. Um, yeah, they comment. In fact, the shirt I have on now, you know how big sleeves are kind of in? Like totally this is cute. The bigger sleeves, whatever. Yeah. Well, my kids are always saying, like making Seinfeld references. They're like, oh, the puffy shirt. <laughs> I'm like, like it's a pirate. Yeah, like I'm a pirate. Um, so yeah, well, it's very cute. And Thank okay, you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. You know how everyone has these LTK accounts? Is that what it is? Like, like to know. Like it. to know. She's a local Dallas person. Who is? The person who started it. Oh, okay. She's so made here's a lot what I want to know. Money. A lot of money. A lot of money. Mm-hmm. Here's what I need to know. So people like not even necessarily like big influencers, like Schmo down the street is like, Hey, you like my shoes, LTK click here, whatever. And so, I mean, sometimes I click, I'm like, oh, oh, let's look now. Are people normal people? I'm not talking like Candace Cameron. I'm saying do normal people, are they making money on this? You have to ask them, but you are supposedly making money every time someone clicks and buys. It's like an affiliate link. And so like if you you could put your kimono up there and if 20 people Yeah, I don't, LT- yeah, I don't have a Walmart account though. I don't have an oh. LTK oh, account. Okay. okay. So All right. It would be lost dollars on on my uh kind of click over. Are you looking to get in the LTK business? I might get in the LTK business. In the Chicos? <laughs> You could hit a whole demographic that's being missed. The problem is, is that my people, my Chico's people aren't familiar with the Insta- Instawebs. Yeah, you'd have Instagram. to go to Facebook. Yeah, I'd have to go over to or Facebook. Or MySpace. I'm, or I'm LinkedIn. In, I'm interviewing Rebecca St. James and I'm like trying to go back and remember the songs uh-huh. of my high school and college years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what were some of my favorites? And this one Google post was like, or post I got through Google was like, go to her MySpace account. Fabulous. Do you know what's not available? Rebecca St. James' MySpace account. MySpace. Oh. It all, took me back. All the all the things. All the all the 90s. Okay, um, let's do a quick catch up here. Okay. And I cannot let this go on any further without letting the people know, because the people want to know this. I went and saw your son. This is true love. In the, <laughs> well, now that sounded creepy, like I have true love for your son. True love for my son. No, I, I mean, I, I love Quaid, mm-hmm. but true love for you that I went and saw the school musical. I didn't have a child in the musical, nor did I have a child to take with me to the musical. None of mine were available. So I'm literally just the creeper that's at Beauty and the Beast. Um, I didn't know why you were coming. I didn't know it was for me. Well, I, I wanted to support and I thought I was going to bring my little, but then my little got, um, not, I wouldn't say a better offer, but he got a offer to go to a baseball game and sit in a so suite. So three and a half hour Beauty and the Beast. Or go sit in a suite and eat junk. He's like, Seems I'm out. equal to me for okay. a first grader. And Boy. so 
I'm just going to say is knowing that there will be people from our school that hear this. So I okay. want to be delicate in how I say this. Okay. But Quaid, your son, was Luminaire. How do you say it? Lumiere. Lumiere. The candlestick that. The candlestick. The person that becomes a candlestick. Yeah. He killed it. Mm. And I don't have fake in me. Like we would just not talk <laughs> about it. I'd be like, let's talk about this party. I went to. <laughs> like he killed it. I sent you a text uh, afterwards and listen, the production was really good and it was so fun to watch all these kids. Um, the beast who knew he could sing is like of my, a D one football player. Yeah. He's a friend of Brett's and yeah, yeah he was incredible. I mean, there's, I could go on and on about the talent, but I said this in a text to you and I meant it like, you know how certain people, they just have the it factor on stage mm. And that was Quaid. Like, I, I don't want to say he stole the show because there were so many standouts, but he kind of stole the show. He was incredible. He sashayed around there, and that's not the best word for it. <laughs> I died laughing. He was yeah. hysterical. He was so comfortable. He was like ad living, you could tell along mm. the way, too. It was so good. Thank you. Thank you. And we found out the next day that he got nominated. For Best Supporting Actor from the local Schmidt and Jones Awards. I don't know what these are. I didn't know it was a thing until last year. But it's a big deal. It's like all the local high schools, not even private schools, like public school productions. Really? Yeah. Like Schmidt, Mr. Schmidt? Schmidt. I don't know. And Mr. Jones come? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. One of them passed away. Oh, sorry. God rest his soul. Um, Um, No, I think think it's a big deal. But I just – Wow. It was fun to watch. And you know, I'm not going to cry again. It was an end of an era. Mm-hmm. You know, people kept commenting. They're like, that role was made for him. Yeah. he Because he had a French accent and he did carry his body, had moved in ways, I don't even know, like very bendy, like oh, a cartoon the French, character. The French accent, you yeah. guys. Yeah. But oh. I've heard him last year, he did a Boston accent. And then two years before he was Bert and Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. And I've seen him as Jojo. Like I've seen him do so many different roles. Yeah, yeah. That it was just fun for me to get to fall in love with a new character that he did and um, just was, cheer him on. But it was the end of an era because I don't know that he'll do musical theater in college. Or, I know. Yeah, I saw you losing your marbles when like, they did I'm the fine, final I'm bow. Fine. And then they're like, this is your last bow ever. And you're like, oh, gosh. Okay. Gosh. It was um, intense. It was so good. And it was so And I was fun. sitting next to my nephew who's like a 14-year-old boy. Oh, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to start crying. And he looks at me with terror in his eyes like, what am I supposed to do with this <laughs> emotional Anne of mine? And here, you know, a friend of mine, I have it here. It's a handkerchief, y'all. Oh, that was sweet. Of a her. reusable handkerchief. No, she is so sweet. Her name's Lindsay. She keeps these with her all the time. She has all a bunch of these. And she gives them to people when they start crying. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to LTK that. My Chico's crowd would <laughs> love those. That's on my LTK, everyone. Y'all keep um, get little cute rose pink. I mean, so cute. What a yeah. sweet gesture. Yeah. So you could have had one of those, but. Okay. One other thing. So he was awesome. I can't wait to see what mm-hmm. he does and mm-hmm. follow him. Okay. Mm-hmm. One other thing. So prom is this weekend and I. I don't really want to talk about prom. Okay, great. We're not going to, other than I have to say one thing. Okay. So everyone at prom wears, by and large, the boys wear tuxes. Yeah. Brett Ganoff is like, no. Does Mm-mm. he have a date? Yeah, he okay. has that girlfriend he's had for a couple oh, yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and her name's Ellen. She's precious. Okay. But so Brett was like, no, I'm go- I don't want a tux. I'm going to, I want a suit. If we're going to spend the money to rent a tux, I want a suit, which, you know, it didn't really add up exactly how I'd hoped, but nonetheless. So he got a suit, but there's the funniest thing right now. Like, uh, I don't know if it's a meme or a gif or a gif, or I don't know even how to say it. Um, I'll LTK it later. It's fine. <laughs> but I have, uh, someone sent it to me and it is a picture of Pee Wee Herman from the day. Right. And he is wearing this skinny suit gray with two the legs are real short the pants are too and he tight was a red bow tie i think it, yeah and it says you used to make fun of him in grade school now your son's wearing this suit to prom and i lost it laughing i sent it to my family my kids are like here's peewee herman yeah, i'm like well that's complicated that's a long story don't yeah. google that no don't don't yeah and anyway my son's wearing a gray suit that is hemmed way too short like ankles short too tight is he wearing high tops no, he okay. is going to wear dress shoes. But, but that, um, yeah, that'll give a good distance between the hem and the right, lots right. Of ankle. Anyway, so I was laughing so hard at that. So anyway, I would like to share that with y'all. You don't need to see that. But that's what the boys are wearing. Apparently, <laughs> when they wear suits, they're wearing the Pee Wee Herman suit. And that's where we are. You know, I, this morning I was like, do I need to get you anything? Like, I mean, girls, total opposite. They've been looking mm-hmm. at dresses for their whole life for their senior prom. And, and he goes, maybe a light blue bow tie. Yeah. So I'm Googling light blue bow ties. It's Saturday, y'all. This is Thursday. Mm-hmm. We're two taping days on a now. Thursday. Um, two days from now, I'm supposed to get a 
light blue mm-hmm. bow tie, and he doesn't have a date. He's yeah, by yeah. himself, solo. It's a, yeah, it's spray tan day for the girls, by the way, the Thursday before the dance, it's spray tan. And then they call it, what do they call it? Orange Thursday. Orange Thursday or something. I don't know. So anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, moving on. Hey, FYI, I know I've mentioned it. I mentioned on Instagram. I mentioned it here very briefly that poor Charlie and I were attacked by a dog Mm -hmm. and I just want to, we're just going to breeze by it. But my comment is I never knew so many people have been bitten by dogs until I was. I thought it was just the mailman apparently not. And why do we even own dogs? They're very violent, apparently. Mm. And this it's our, it's our problem. These are wild animals that we're trying to tame. But I did. I, it's, it's amazing how many people come out of the woodwork with identification that they too can relate to your trauma. Um, do you, you can't relate. You've never, this is never, oh, no. you know, you related a little bit. You said that someone, some dog came out no, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. No, it wasn't me, but thanks for remembering. <laughs> no, but I wonder, do you carry like a dog? Like I might a, get a stick. No, no, you can't do that. Now we're going to get hate mail. I'm just saying. Is there, is there a bio-friendly, do. cage-free, organic spray we can keep with Ooh. us? That, uh, can, I that, don't know. I don't know what it would have helped in this do? situation. Yeah. Well, I literally, my brain keeps trying to solve for what could I have done differently. One, don't get in the middle of a dog fight, but I don't know. And it sweet. wasn't even a dog fight. It was a dog attack. Yeah. yeah. But anywho, I'm healing up. Good. I will. I still have a hand and I was very smart to take off my rings before my fingers swelled up. Oh yeah. That was very smart. Cause listen, um, I, my wedding ring, um, never comes off, but it's not like a, a, a commitment as much as it is. a oh my, no, literally, I think some of, my, syndrome. some of my bruising, I think was trying to get those rings over my knuckles and yeah. like in oh. the moment, but Isn't it interesting that I had this amazing 25-year wedding anniversary trip literally Mm -hmm. the week before? And then, yeah. And someone said, oh, I just feel like you have those amazing moments that you can pull from when the hard things happen. And I'm like, is it? I don't know. I don't know which chicken or egg situation. Like, Mm -hmm. was it just good? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Or I don't know. I, I don't just know. know the order was better. Right. I don't know the causal situation in yeah, that, but it is good. it is nice to be able to draw from those things mm-hmm. and and remember, like you know, all is well. The Lord is good. I have the support system around me. We can afford to get the medical care we need. Like you have to yeah. kind of start digging a little deeper. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. Don't Mom Alone is sponsored by Better Help. Now, you hear Cynthia and I all the time sharing what is hard for us, different stressors that are going on, and it always is so great to have someone to talk to, to not keep that all bottled in, because when you do, it can affect you negatively. Well, therapy is also a safe space to get things off your chest, figure out how to work through what is weighing you down. I know that in the past when I was overwhelmed with four young kids and a husband who was working really long hours, I went to therapy and it was so helpful to get perspective from my counselor and to know that what I was feeling was normal and to get some tools to help me move through that season. If you are thinking of starting therapy, one option I want to give you that has a low barrier to entry is better help. It is entirely online. So this is perfect for moms. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So get all that stress off your chest with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash DMA today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help. H E L P dot com slash DMA. Okay, so uh, I went to a 40th birthday <laughs> party this weekend. How do you have such young friends? I don't. Um, I, I don't know. I was thinking when you mentioned that, I was like, I'm going to, I, we had a 50th birthday party. That's a whole decade later. I know, I know, I know. So I went to a 40th birthday party, and there's a couple things I need to point out for everyone. One, Okay. So Ready. they said we're like casual chic. And I was like, <laughs> wait, hold the phone. Like and, well, they spelled C H I C. Well, I ran into her and that's what she said. And then she said, and she's darling, love this girl. Um, and she said, you know, just like going out clothes. I'm like, girl, I go out to Costco. <laughs> going out. Like, where do I, I what? going to the baseball game? <laughs> Chico's doesn't have that section. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she's like, casual chic. That might be a kimono. A kimono. No, it was not a kimono. Okay. And so she's like, well, it's my birthday, so I'm probably going to wear like sequins. And you're like, Wait. bright colors. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, casual. Oh, this oh. is Dallas casual chic people. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. You have to point out. It's a different level. It's a different level. Okay. I always, by the way, I don't know if I've said this maybe in other episodes, I always wear the wrong thing. Oh, you do? Consistently. Well, like if I, if they're under, if they're like, oh, we're doing jeans and tops, I'm in a full on maxi dress. Mm-hmm. If they're like thinking, oh, they're wearing like the nicest dress they could get from anthropology, mm-hmm. I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. I didn't, I don't get the memos. I didn't go to the yeah. class, the etiquette class. Well, I don't know. the fact that you just mentioned a kimono when I said it was casual chic tells me <laughs> that that's probably true. Yeah. Um, and we love you anyway. Um, what is our friend Kay Wyma says? She's a Oh, she's a, a missionary, um, a, mission, a fashion missionary, or a, a missionary, dress- missionary, missional dresser, a missional dresser. She, her whole mission <laughs> is to make you feel better about yourself. <laughs> but um, yeah. okay, so I, so I, I go to the party, and what I'm wearing, by the way, under no one's standards, is casual chic. So let's start there. And no one, there's no one that was like, oh, Cynthia nailed it. They're well, like, what would be casual chic if it's not kimono? Um, well, all the girls had a really, really cute kind of short. Um, a line ish dresses, yeah. you know what I mean? From Bright. the same company, mm-hmm, darling. Okay, so I had on a long dress, like um, maybe like a maxi type thing uh-huh. with a uh, like a jean jacket, but it wasn't jean color. Um, <laughs> under no one standards did I did I hit the mark with that. However, a couple things you need to know. Yeah. One, people do these things at venues now. Okay, I okay. thought we we're going to a restaurant. It's a venue, and these venues, everyone's listening. They're like Cynthia, are you a thousand years old? They're dark, cut like black, and then they they like they had brought in someone that decorated it really cute with all her favorite colors and balloons and streamers and all things. And she 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 has um, artwork she does, oh, wow. and so they had some of her artwork around, and then her favorite quotes. It was really intentional and precious, and I loved it. And so um so I went to the it, I was like, where are we going? Where's this restaurant? And I'm like, oh, it's a venue. And like, yeah, you know these things are venues. I'm like, oh yeah, they are. And they had a little machine that when you walk in, it takes your pictures like with your friends and it texts them to you. And you can even do like a bunch of pictures. Like like a photo booth? Don't laugh. It's not a photo booth. It's like a little, maybe (laughs) like a machine. It was like a round camera, a round thing on a stand. Uh Okay, fine. And then (laughs) with a ring light, but here's what really got me. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? What? They had napkins done with her name on it. Right. And it said vintage 1984. Mm-hmm. My husband, bless Mike, he looks and he goes, oh, I think I was in high school then. <laughs> Vintage 1984. So that was her birth year. That was her birth year. And so 40 years ago was 1984. I guess so, yeah. Can you guys even no. believe that? And people listening are like, yeah, that was my birth year. Yeah, they're all, no, they don't listen to us because they're like, Not I stopped listening Chico when people. she started talking about Chico's. <laughs> Um, but it was super fun. The girl was so nice. We had fun. Um, and, and I had spoken at the school earlier that week. And so a lot of them. Oh, our school. Yeah. Yeah. At our school. I went to that. Yes. That was so and, nice hey, of you to come. See, we both show the love. We showed up. I showed, showed up, up in the middle of the day to a, a luncheon, female luncheon. To a all luncheon the moms that I spoke have at. have a lot of time. I know. And it was really sweet because, um, so I, a lot of the girls like, were there and, and knew me from that. So we had, you know, we just chatted, whatever. But anyway, I just want to tell you. That if anybody was wondering, 1984 is 40 year old birthday party. I don't know what casual chic is. There are venues now, and apparently, I also wasn't familiar. I thought a photo booth had a thing you walked into and shut a curtain. <laughs> That's the end. Thank you for being here. Did they have one of the ones I think are really cool, the 360, where yeah. you stand in the middle and the camera goes oh, around you? No, I don't think it did that. Oh, you'd remember. Okay. No, I don't think we had. Oh, that. yeah. That's so fun. And the people like pose and, and mm-hmm. the camera's going in a circle. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's next level. We're going to get that for your 50th. Well, I already had a 50th, so oh. thanks. That's Why don't you take Cheers your kimono and calm down on that? 50th. <laughs> you did? Yeah. What are you? 49? 47. What? Mm-hmm. Mm. Just a little baby. I'm a wee baby. That's why you're shopping at Walmart and I'm at Chico's. <laughs> well, no, I don't know why. You're, that's I a whole know, other you thing. you got to follow the girl in her bra and underwear. Okay. Okay, next. Um, Bad book review? Guys. Heather. You mentioned, I'm like, what? I got my first bad review on my book. What? You did, Surely you got a bad Don't review. Don't read them. Well, no, everyone says that, but I think that's 
whatever. That's pie in the sky. Like I agree in theory. Oh, you shouldn't read them. You don't care what anybody says. I care what the Lord says. Yes, I do care. You what the wrote Lord. for the audience of one. Yes, Cynthia. all of those things. There's an audience of one. There's also a publisher that's like, let's sell some books, people. Um, and what in the world could they possibly say? And, and I do have, you want to relive it, or is it too? I hard? can relive it a little okay. bit. But and my next book is due in August. I Wait, what? I know. I haven't written one word. Not one word to me that it is hard when you have back to back i told you back to back is hard i told you well you told hard. me after i'd already signed a contract so I'm that's like saying, thanks for sharing it's real hard i was yeah mm, okay so book hard. number two is due and i'm like i mean i kind of need to know how what the response is on one and the response has been i mean great but you know the people who dm or reach out or run into you are going to be nice generally speaking and so the reviews i'm like oh and i think there's like i don't know i'm just under 60 reviews and all of them are good until this week and i got a two star and the good news is I went and looked at uh, my good friends, other people who have written books and I looked and they had some pretty bad reviews too. And I felt better about myself. I was from like, the same person. No, no, no. Just okay. in general. I'm um, like, this is a troll. They're just going around making. No, no, it's not the same Satanists, person. Maybe. But um, I'm not going to go into it all because nobody cares. But I just wanted you to know that as a Did person. Did you cry? No. Do you need a handkerchief? Bring is me- it chief or chiff? Handkerchief. Handkerchief. I say Handkerchief. Like chief, like the chief, like Patrick well, Mahomes. Chief. I think it's spelled that way. Anyway, a handkerchief. You didn't cry. I did. What emotion did you have? Um, I got the pillow. There was a little bit of oh, the emotion spelled a little bit of okay. Well, now we're for real. Like you. What oh, you legit. Start? When you've got the haters, you got a hater. Somebody, yeah, you know. Then I'm like, okay, true. there's somebody outside of my family reading this thing. It's, so there was that. And then as I read on, and listen, by the way, the person said they expected more of me as a trusted. I don't know, source or whatever, because apparently they listened to me or something. Oh, so if you're listening, rude, I still love you. And she said on the title, Jesus loves you at least. She was like, meh, was her title <gasps> on the title. The book was meh. Yeah. How do you spell I kinda made that? A, I made a cow sound. I made a cat. <laughs> no, I made a cat sound. Do that one. <laughs> no, it was meh. I don't know how meh. you make that. It's M E H. Oh, meh. And then she went on to say how um, that being in a similar place, she thought when I talked about life is messy, that I would actually talk about hard things we face. And that, you know, if you're a person that grew up with a great um, family and you have a great nuclear family, you have lots of friends and all that, this is a book for you. But if you're walking through a life with no friends and and a hard marriage and blah, 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 then this is not your book. And I was like, well, okay, taken, well taken. That being said, it wasn't titled life is devastating god is good it wasn't life is traumatic god barely shows up and there's, it, yeah the there's, covers, there are books for that that covers light and bright like lisa mm-hmm. turkhurst is your person if you need yeah. the so or body keeps a score or allison cook yeah there's definitely that's the thing right we're not for all the people oh we're for four for very few i'm finding but yes mm-hmm. we're not for all the people so anyway that was and i always say consider the source well, um, it was an Who initial, did, so I don't know. Who, but I'm just saying, like, come, up, come if you clean. don't know, like, if my spouse comes to me with some hard to hear critique, for sure, I'm g- it's not going to feel good, but I'm going to take it because mm-hmm. that person loves me the most and cares about me long term the most. But a rando, yeah, a rando, that it just doesn't fit their life story. That's yeah, I'm good. And and literally you cannot write to all the people. Like even if you went back and you're like, well, in my next book, I'm going to address all the people who've gone through trauma. You can't speak to that. Yeah. Because you haven't. That's I haven't experience. walked that road, but yeah. I did tell, I was telling Mike last night, we went on a walk. It was right out of a page out of the book of the McFaddians. Oh, we don't walk. go on walks though. Dogs well, attack. And we had our dog with us. Oh um, no. We that, went don't for follow a walk. the McFaddians advice anymore. Yeah. We went on a walk last night and, um, I did say, I, I hear that loud and clear. But I will also say foster care is nothing to sneeze at. Like if you're, if you've walked through, I mean, there's hard things out there. I think foster care can, can really rank up there with that, with hard things and walking the hard things God calls you to and, and loving a child like your own and thinking they're leaving the next day and praying. That yeah, they, I think it was I mean, when you were speaking no. at that women's thing and you said that like praying over the crib, not knowing where this child's going the next day hit me in a new way because people are like foster care foster care foster care you hear all the words it's like you can't relate mm-hmm. to the thing until you go through the thing truly right so even though it's like that person has different trauma you can't yeah. compare it yeah you can't just, compare it you it's can't like compare it and so yeah you just, can speak and the person who's gone through foster care they'll be relating to that piece of your story yeah and i can't even relate yeah 
So anyway, and you sent the sweetest text after I spoke that day and you were so cute or, or an audio text thing and said, I was thinking when I speak, I hope I sound like that. Yeah. And I was like, that's the nicest thing no. another speaker could say because no, it ain't easy talking to your sound. peers. Okay. Moving on. Mother's Day is coming. I mean, I'm ready. Do you get sell? Uh, you have all boys. I Tell bet they me. bring you breakfast in bed or something. What do they do? Here's the deal. Morning glory. It's been all different versions over the years and I could cry. I would love to go back to the days when they're sweet, mm, mm-hmm. the, the homemade bracelets that they would make. I think we should force the high school teachers to pull mm-hmm. out the crafts. What about the duct tape wallets and all that, that? kind of stuff. Oh, like pull it. out the crafts and have them make a homemade necklace for their moms. Mm-hmm. I mean, we need, we need homemade gifts from teenagers. That's what I need this Mother's Day. Do you remember the sheets they filled out, you guys, in the <laughs> preschools? My mom likes to. And what was the one that the stripper? What? The kid that filled it all out, and it basically looked like his mom was a stripper. He even drew a picture, <laughs> but she was going to bar method. Oh, that's so good. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm really. She likes it. a pole. She, she goes like- with her friends. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's so happy when she comes back. My, yeah. I remember what did what did they feel? One of you? mine said, I mean, all kinds of things, but I remember one of them. I think Brett was said, like, "What does your mom like to do?" And he said, "Sleep," <laughs> which is so funny because I'm that's not really my personality. I'm kind no, of a doer. You're really good at doing, and I know. Thank you. She likes to work, <laughs> um, and I was like, "Oh, good." Hmm. And um, yeah, you know, they make you look terrible. These kids, like uh, when the school wanted to call me and tell me about something recently that JB did that was great, and he told them, "You better not call her. She's probably too busy." She, oh and I was gosh. like, "Oh man, mother of the year, awesome." <laughs> you better not call me. Did you get any of those little things sent home where they describe you and you're like? Oh. Yeah, I can I like I cannot remember. I feel like I need to pull them out. I feel like I don't have a good story maybe with we'll that. Post them. Or maybe y'all should post them for us. And on our Mother's yeah. Day, if you've got one of those, will you post them and tag us so we can laugh? I'm assuming if your kids are doing one now, it'd have you in a kimono. <laughs> no, I mean, they're definitely like, what does your mom always say? Mm-hmm. Those are always in there, you know, and it's like, be quiet. Hurry up. Hurry up. Don't touch that. Yeah, all those things. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I love the homemade craft. And I think that it used to be on Mother's Day, I'm like, let's all be together. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, you know, in some seasons when they're real little, it was like, I just want a day where I go get my nails done right. and just leave me alone. What do you think about when Mother's Day is spent with your mom or your mother-in-law? Okay, I was just going to – No glad, shade, but – No, no, no. And and I am so thankful my mom and my mother-in-law are both still living. So, like, I do right. not take that for granted. Because that's a whole thing and too, I, y'all. I get yeah, – Yeah, I love that. And and But here's the thing. As awesome as my husband is, he doesn't think about his mom really, like, in terms this of Mother's Day. I'm saying. And so I not only – So Mother's Day is me making sure that my mom and my mother-in-law have gifts, are celebrated – and then do you get together with them on yeah, the day? Usually. So that's and, the thing. And so then just recently I've been like, listen, because then I'm ending up cooking and other things. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, listen, I on Mother's Day, and we've done this for a couple of years. I don't know, no one's asked about it this year. So I probably <laughs> need to institute it again. But I'm like, I would like you to order food, like even from like the local eatery, like grocery Bubba's store, or whatever, or babes. where I like like order me some tea sandwiches mm. hello chico's crowd um like i like me a cucumber one a little pimento cheese some tea sandwiches some fruit maybe with some poppy seed dressing on it wow. i want like some girly I, your menu. <laughs> they want their menu back and so i'm Way like dream big cynthia <laughs> order girly food and yeah. i'd like to have that and delivered or dropped or whatever. And I don't want to be involved. And then I still get the house clean and buy gifts for all the people, but it is a touch. Do you get a gift? Like, will your, will he go out and buy? Yeah. Yeah. Now, or do you tell him? Well, I usually just say like, Hey, and by the way, corded appliances off limits in your world or not. Cause I love a corded appliance. Tell me more. I love <laughs> a vacuum. So you would be okay with a vacuum, a blender, a Vitamix. That's be a real nice. If I've asked for it, for sure. But yeah, like I already told okay. him, I am obsessed with cordless vacuums. Oh, cordless. so that doesn't have a I cord. guess that doesn't really, you know. You're fine with an appliance. I love me an appliance. And okay. so usually I'm very practical now. And I just told Mike the other day, I'm like, I need another cord. I, I burned those cordless vacuums. Okay. LTK. It's all my thing. I burn through them because I use them all the time because my family's a mess and my dog and all that. I love them. But yeah. Okay. Think, what about you? Gifts? No, I just think with age, I've come to recognize 
that if I want to be treated special, I need to tell people mm. what is special. Like no more playing the game of like, you. Sh this is, you know, I saw a clip from the Holderness family. It's her birthday. And it's like, no, I don't need anything. What that actually means is <laughs> I need you to know exactly what I want and I totally. need you to get it for me. I don't want to play those games anymore. So it's just like being real blunt about what I want, how I want the look day to look means I need to know myself better. Mm -hmm. I, there was one year that was goes down as the worst Mother's Day in history where I had broken my foot and I didn't know it. Oh. And we found out on Mother's Day and yeah, Bruce yeah. was leaving for London the next day. Mm. And it's like all the all of my – like I woke up and I was like ironing the kids' shirts and like he was still in bed. There was no breakfast in bed. I was so grumpy. I didn't know the foot was broken yet. Like okay. I'm doing all the things and I'm real resentful about it and ended with, okay, now I can't even walk up the stairs and carry my baby. Like oh, yeah. I need someone to serve me fully. So how many breakfasts in bed did I get and lunch and dinner for the next two weeks? Mm. So it's like, I don't know. It just was a eye-opening experience of one, just say if you want breakfast in bed, yeah. just tell them. That's not going to. It's still going to be great. I don't. You don't want – tell no. me more. Oh. You don't want to – But I like what you're saying. Just tell them what – Tell you know, what, what do you What do you like? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like That's if one. you had your ideal day, Mike's listening, what would it be? Um, Mike's totally not the, listening. But, but the, the tea um, – the tea, the, I like the me, tea my sandwiches. 1980s tea sandwiches. Do you I don't want know. punch with some sherbet in it and some Sprite? Oh, my gosh. Mrs. Wade. Literally, you're like – Mrs. Wade used to have those at my piano recitals. Yes. Gosh, those were yeah, good. Those no. were good. Okay. So what would you actually do beyond the food? Like. I don't know. Do you like a pedicure? Do you like a like yeah. is that relaxing? Are you a massage person? No, gosh, I don't like to be touched. No. Mm -mm. But anyway, you want to be with friends? Like, would you want to hang out with friends on Mother's Day? No, I like to be with my kids, my family. Just everybody get along, and I'd like my house oh, to be straight. Peace. You know how I am about my house being straight. I want so my house. Don't mess up the house. Don't and everybody mess up the get house. Along. Everybody get along, and let's have some eighties food and call it done. Like, <laughs> would it just you watch a show or a movie? Is that um, relaxing? I watch show, but yeah, I don't really care what we do, but. Uh, Pretty weather would be nice. One okay, year, so I think it was the COVID. Them. Yeah, the COVID year, dear Lord. The COVID year, my sweet husband bought, he went to the Lowe's and yeah. bought flowers. And I mean, that's, you know. Like for the yard. For the yard. And he planted. Wow, like that's a good idea. Seasonal flowers. And it made that's me so. Better than flowers in the house that are going to die in a week. Yeah. And what did you need during COVID? Like nothing, right? So I, I, that was a sweet one. But you needed, you needed toilet paper. Yeah. So let's just. Well, yeah. And yeah. And yeah. sanitizers. And hand sanitizer. I mean, I so everyone, we would like to say happy Mother's Day. Happy we want Mother's you Day. to know that you're doing a good job. We want you to yeah. know that you're getting it wrong. Do you think people okay. believe us though? You're no, doing I a think good job. It bounces right off. Do you I don't believe know. me if I said, Cynthia, you're doing a great job? It depends on how my kids have acted on any given no, day. No, but like I just heard you call in the school, tell the school no, that let them know that your son's going to be leaving to go see a surgeon for his arm. Like, these things, you keep the family going. You mm -hmm. are doing a great job. Thank you. It, are you receiving it? Oh, I received Let it. Let it go in your heart. Feel <laughs> it. Put your hand on your heart. Everyone listening, you are doing a great job. You're doing the best that you can. Can we just at least sit with that? You're doing the best that you can. And with you do a million that things yeah. that are unnoticed, unseen, and unappreciated. And I want you to know, yeah. thank you for restarting the dryer and letting the clothes fluff because they had been sitting there for a week. And thank you for throwing out the fruit that was kind of gross. And there's a few fruit flies flying around yeah. there. Thank you for that, that no one noticed. And thank you for the fact that you bought paper products because the dishwasher isn't working right, but you're trying not to call the repairman because it might be the wrong time of month to spend that kind of money. Like whatever the 3,000 things yeah, are that decisions. you did yeah. in the last two days, thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. We see you mom to mom. And we, even if you drop some things. Yeah. It, we, we always notice the things we drop or miss. We don't notice all the things we got right. Yeah. So happy Mother's Day to everyone. And, yeah. um, hope and, and let your people know how you want to be celebrated. Don't let it be a mystery. Okay, you've heard how busy Cynthia and I are and how crazy May is. And one thing that I have been loving lately, especially since I haven't been able to go to my Pilates after the whole dog bite situation, is I can be real gentle with myself and get some movement in with Total Gym. The Total Gym is completely helping me right now because I can do a simple workout from home 
and keep the strength that I feel like I lost when I stopped doing Pilates outside the home, it's awesome. You can get a total body workout in just 10 to 20 minutes. Right now, you can try Total Gym for 30 days for just a dollar plus free shipping. I'm serious. One dollar. And with the new model, the Total Gym Fit, you can do over 85 different exercises in one home gym. You'll never get bored working out again. And like I said, it accommodates all fitness levels. So whether it's your eight-year-old working out or your grandma who lives with you who's 80, literally anyone listening can enjoy this Total Gym because it uses your own body weight as resistance. So I can get on there and again, I can do my Pilates exercises using the bands, using my body weight and changing the incline of the bench to determine how challenging it is. I also really, really, really love that with Total Gym, there's no assembly required. Thank you. It sets up in minutes right out of the box and it conveniently folds up. I mean, y'all, The amount of people living in my home and all of their things, we don't have tons of space. And so I can fold up the total gym. Right now it's in my dining room. Okay, that's the truth. But I can pull it out, use it in the hallway, and put it back. Uh, Total gym can now be found in over 4 million homes. So they aren't just another fitness trend. They are a brand you can trust. Remember, it only takes 10 to 20 minutes a day to reshape your body. Head to totalgymdirect.com slash DMA for an additional 20% off your order. Plus that includes a free ab crunch attachment and free shipping. This special offer won't be available for much longer. That's totalgymdirect.com slash DMA for an additional 20% off. Make sure you go to my URL, totalgymdirect.com slash DMA so they know that I sent you. Okay, um, also coming up in May, it's the end of the school year, praise Jesus, as that's my song for that. You're I not have, excited? It's a mixed bag for me. I love summer. Oh, you've got a lot. Go, you got to figure out well, your I have a reading. book coming. But well, you have a book. Oh, you got to write a book. I got to write a book. Oh my gosh, Cynthia. I know, but it's fine, everyone. Don't panic. But I think for me, my daughter will be home in, as we're taping this, she'll be home in two weeks from oh. UT. I and love- she's going to work from home this, like she'll like be in Dallas for the summer? Yeah, she'll be in Dallas for the summer. She's studying for the LSAT because she wants to go to law school. We've tried to talk her out of it. We can't talk her out of it. We're like, come Nobody on. Nobody likes being a lawyer. Take it from a girl who went to law school. Don't go. <laughs> yeah. but, so anyway, she'll be home. She's studying for the LSAT. She's going to work part time. Um, okay. When the college kids come back, you're going to experience this. It's so fun and all that, but it totally throws everything in upheaval and it becomes like, uh, oh, it's a 24 hour celebration. And then, you know, like I've got the teenager and then the real world hits. Life starts at 1030 at night in that house. Right. Uh, and then, and they're ready to eat again. We get the food out. Who wants to watch a movie? Well, I have a kid that gets up also at 630 in the morning because uh, uh, I have a little one. And so like, there's just, there's, it's, it's constant. So summer party. isn't a good necessarily. It's fun. I love every bit of it, but I also like routine and schedule. And so it's totally, I love that. But then the other thing that's hard for having a kiddo that's ADHD, he doesn't do as well in the summer. He thrives in an environment Mm -hmm. where it is like structured and we go to school every day. And so trying to figure out with him, like we're doing ridiculously expensive tutoring this summer for reading because we've got to. And by the way, everyone, thanks for your sweet notes. People are so nice. Emails encouraging me. Like you're going to get there sending me books, ideas, but we are doing some intensive tutoring this summer. Um, that's outrageously expensive, but I'm really hoping that we can get this kind of under. So trying to figure out, do we do camps? Do we not? I just think there's a lot. And so going into, so you're like, you're, you're about end of school years. You're not looking, I'm just like, I, this week it was making sure everybody finish their final drafts of essays, final projects, lots of tests. I'm just ready to stop being the like, yeah, you know, I don't want to be the one who's like pushing and reminding and coordinating. Like, have you printed it out? Did you, what do you have tomorrow? I know they're supposed to do that, but I've tried where I just let them do it without my reminders and literally failing classes. So anyway, I'm ready for that to be over, but I know end of school year ceremonies can be hard. Well, and so here's here's our pep talk of the day. We had we had a couple pep talks. This is the probably the third pep talk. Here's your third pep talk. Your child is probably not going to get the award, and it's okay. Yeah, JB's not going to get the reading award. 
Oh, we just I'm need not to know laughing. that. I'm just uh, right. I know we're all empathizing. The real, in fact, the yesterday the he they, might though. They sent out something from the library. I was in saying charge. if your child's done filled out the whatever thing of the first grade log, then there there'll be a thing and they'll give them a certificate mm -hmm. and all that for all the books they read. And, mm -hmm. and so we're not going to get that. In fact, mm -hmm. funny story, everyone, my oldest, yeah. when she went into the private school that she go, that she, our boys are at now, um, when she started, she went in on probation. She'd come out of a public school that wasn't real strong at the time. And so she didn't read very well, funny enough. So I thought she was getting this big award, like the million dollar reader, a million word reader award. And I get there and I was kind of walking down the hall kind of like mm -hmm, yeah we're getting that it. stuff turns out that we were new to school and i didn't realize she was getting an award but it's for like the lowest of readers that had improved <laughs> i was like i went from thinking like yeah we did to, yeah we did it oh okay, okay. so humble, humble pie. pie so what here's the thing your kid may not get the award and so if no. your kid let's start there well i'm going to start with if your kid is getting the award i need you to recognize that there is a ton of mamas that are putting in all the time and all the effort and they're not getting it and neither is their kid. And so let's just be sensitive to that as we're posting, as we're doing the things. Yeah. I just find, I don't know if it's just our school, the other school, not the school you're at, but it's always the same families. Oh, the same. Yeah. Because the kids and then are I'm like, well, there must be a formula because they figured it out because all their kids win all the awards. And then I have to think, especially if it's the academic awards, Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that is their priority. That is where they put their attention. They put their time. This is this is the goal. We don't do that. And then at the athletic awards, I'm like, we don't win those either. So we don't put our time. Very good at watching movies and video games. Very oh, yes. good. If there was an award for that, sold. Then that's yeah. highest bidder. We would win. We yeah. We but I just have to be like, I'm sitting there, and it is. But I do like to be the one who cheerleads the people. Mm -hmm especially if they're friends of my kids and takes the video of them winning because the parents are trying to soak it all in. And you and I've talked about that before, just like taking videos for each other, for our kids last year and mm -hmm. your son getting the drum award. <laughs> no, we got the clarinet award the clarinet. for the band and he's a drummer. <laughs> it's like, wow. Clarinet award. Wheels are off. Anyway, I, I just think that I have to kind of recognize that not everyone can get the awards. Yeah. And – they put time and energy into that. That is mm -hmm. should be rewarded. Well, and then I would say one other thing that we've talked about before, but I'm going to reiterate, is that the awards are always – they're recognizing things that are measurable most of the time. Uh, yeah. And so we've talked about this. Like yeah. our culture rewards things that are measurable. How fast can you run around the track? How hard can mm -hmm. you hit the ball? How – whatever. How many books did you read? Yeah. Yes. How many books you can read, right? And so as disbelievers and moms, we also – like some of the most God-honoring things – most of the time are things that are not measurable and are things that will not get you called up on the stage. So mm -hmm. like we need to be, we need to be the people calling out those things. And so, you know, our yeah. kids are leaving text threads that are ungodly. Our kids are maybe not going to the party where what's, whatever's going to be happening. Our kids have walked away from friend groups and aren't kind to someone like they're getting up early, maybe to spend time in God's word. I'm not saying our kids are doing all these things. I'm just saying there's places and there's there. places that, that are not getting the award. Same for you, mom. You're not getting yes. the award for all the times you get up in the middle of the night with the kid who has eczema and you're applying more lotion. You didn't get an award for best mom of an ex kid with eczema. Right. But the unseen things are seen by God. Yeah. And I'm going to say as the Don't Mom Alone community, it's really helpful if you see something in a kid, let that mom know. Mm -hmm. at, even at the musical, a mom came up to me and she's like, I know our kids don't often get – noticed for things but she said we we were came to practice that or for the performance on sunday you have to get there early and the gate was closed and we couldn't get in oh and your son had already gotten through the gate and he reversed his car mm -hmm. close enough yeah. to open the gate for us and then he, he took off and she's like i just want you to know it was a small thing but i noticed his kindness and i'm like See, those are the things we just don't, we need to hear them because we wonder sometimes. Yeah. So are maybe our that's kids our, thinking about others? Are they right. kind? Are they? Call out. That's yeah. what I would say. Like this month in the month of award ceremonies, let's be the people, all of us, you guys, let's call out the unmeasurable, the unnoticed, mm -hmm. like call it out and each other's friends, kids, send the text. Yeah. That's not a hard thing to do. So, okay. Let's end and wrap up with 
our fun then, news. Yeah, our fun news. I don't know how fun it is, everyone. I we'll wanna... see how fun it is. We're going about to find out in about uh, 10 minutes. Yes. Not for you guys. Two weeks for you guys. Two weeks, you guys. And so Heather and I have our favorite podcast that we don't talk about. Nobody <laughs> speaks of it because- We cannot recommend listening. We cannot recommend listening because they have potty mouths. Yeah. That being said, we love the format. And so we are going to try through the summer and then we'll see how it does. But we are going to do a little version of that where- We surprise each other with a guest. So Cynthia may not know who I've invited on and the guests will just show up and then we'll interview them like- like a podcast interview, but it'll yeah. be with both of us kind of interviewing them, which should might be chaotic. We'll see. We'll see. Might be good. Might be bad. Mm. And then uh, this first one, Cynthia is surprising me. So I have no idea who I'm about to get on the phone with the phone. Hmm. What is what this? Is it corded? <laughs> <laughs> get on the get on the, the riverside. The, it's get on a the Zoom fax thing. machine with. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. And it'll, we'll see if they uh, if y'all like it. And we're going to do it. And so we're going to read. This is that little hitch and by the way at the play the other night at the musical um someone said to us that a couple people told us the first friday of the month is like their favorite uh. it was so sweet because they love because they know that's when sidetrack comes out and so this is not what we're doing this new little thing is not replacing we will still have no, no we'll still have first this. friday this will just but, be a bonus but there will and it'll be on both of our it's going to go on both our podcasts and so where if right now you're listening to i'm alone if you're my mesmerized people whatever listen to whatever you want to but it, it will be We'll have different intros, but it'll be the same guest. So it's coming your way starting in June. When's no, it coming out? May. Oh, sorry. Uh, for me. I mean, you do it in June. You do you. <laughs> you do you, boo. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks for tracking. Oh my gosh. How do I end it? Stop. Thanks for tracking with us, y'all. Um, so many things. Every time afterwards, Cynthia and I were like, was that okay? Was that even funny? Was that too serious? Sometimes we get kind of serious, but hopefully you were laughing along with us. And yes, always tag us if you have thoughts, if anything you were struck by. If you have a funny example of a questionnaire your child has filled out about you, post that on the socials and tag us. We would love to see it. We would love to laugh with you. I don't know why I couldn't think of any examples from my own children. Uh, we even put a questionnaire in the show notes if you want a laugh. I this week had one where I asked my child questions. I had a little one-on-one -on -one lunch with my oldest and asked him questions. And I'll put that questionnaire in the show notes too, if you want to have that little bonding experience, if that connection is important to you for Mother's Day. Um, I'm going to pray over all of us as we enter this month. Lord, I know there are so many walking through lots of hard things right now, and it is good to laugh it is good to have some levity in the midst of a lot of suffering and hard. And so we thank you for that, God. We thank you for the chance to just um, enjoy friends and enjoy uh, just the good things you have given us, Lord. But I also pray over this month of May. Um, I pray for any grief associated with Mother's Day. I also pray for any of uncomfortable feelings that come up with the ending of the school year, with the award ceremonies, with unmet expectations and where a ch you thought a child would be. Lord, I pray that we would trust you ultimately for your big plans, that we would see the things that aren't getting awards and we would celebrate those in our kids. Lord, we would celebrate them in ourselves, God, the things that the world is not applauding, but you see, you see the love, you see the kindness, you see the compassion that we pour out to our children each day. And I thank you, God, that it doesn't have to be flashy and big to matter to you um, and for the eternal things that really do matter, Lord. I pray over each woman or man listening that they would feel your love and comfort today and the joy that you feel over them and the love that you have for them. In Jesus' name, a Men. Thanks y'all for joining Cynthia and I today. And I'll be back on Monday with another interview. All right. Adios. Bye.